thank you. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, uh, welcome everyone. So I'm Evan Gavar. I'm tech lead member of the GaiaX CTO team and of the GaiaX lab, um, working on the implementation of the specification and giving feedback to the working groups. Today, I will be uh, the presenter of uh, this stuff. Um, I will explain what technologies and standards are used in GaiaX, what GaiaX specifies, what are the specifications and documents uh, the association produces, what is the, state of, uh, what is the current state of the implementation, what have we done, what is in progress, and I will uh, demonstrate how you can, uh, you can uh, issue your first verifiable credentials uh, and uh, the, um, I will show you two ways of doing it. Uh, one, the easiest way uh, with the wizard and one with some code, some Python code. So uh, I hope you are ready. First of all, um, we will talk about uh, stuff that is not um, specified by GAIAX. We are using um, this kind of uh, Specification, so verifiable credential, JSON LD, JSON Web Signature, DID, and Shackle uh, in GAIAX. And the first is verifiable credential, uh, that's a specification from the W3C, and it's used to represent any form of credential a permit, a license, a passport, your diploma. You could have it in the form of a ver verifiable credential. Uh, we use it in GAIAX to represent pretty much everything your company, yourself, the people you are working with, your services, your data, everything is a verifiable credential in GAIAX. The main feature of the ver verifiable credential uh, is that they are cryptogra cryptographically uh, signed by the issuer. That allows anyone to perform some verification on it. You can verify that the data was not tampered, and you can verify that the issuer is legitimate to issue. Uh, everything is public, decentralized, so you are uh, on your own to verify everything. Um, on our case, uh, VCs are written using JSON-LD, that I will explain just after, uh, which allows uh, to intricate and bind credentials and claims, meaning a, uh, a claim can point on another claim saying, I refer to this for that. I will show an example just after. Um, that's uh, linked uh, with JSON-linked data, so JSON-LD still a W3C specification. Um, as I said, uh, the point is that that's just JSON, uh, as you know, but you are able to make some uh, references to other credential units. Um, each ID is um, resolvable, which means that uh, when you create a credential, you put an ID, and when people will need to access this credential, they can, they can just resolve the ID and the credential should be there. Um, they are using, um, if you are familiar with XML, they are using the same notion of context as in XML, uh, allowing you to create your own ontology, vocabulary, to express your needs. Uh, in GAIAX, our namespace is uh, quite uh, annoying at the moment, but will change soon to w3id.org slash GAIAX, so that anyone knows that this is a GAIAX credential and not something from the registry. As I said, you can create links uh, between uh, credential in JSON-LD. Basically, a JSON-LD is a graph, and you can uh, dig into it to retrieve everything you want. And JSON-LD is just one representation for RDF. Uh, so this is a credential. As you can see, I have a context. I have a type that's a verifiable credential. I have my ID there that should be resolvable so that people can retrieve my VC just using the ID. I find my issuer, and the content of my VC. This is also the same VC, but this time represented in the form of a graph. As you can see, I can navigate the graph and find my headquarter address. This is also the same VC, but this time it's totally expanded. Each JX uh, was expanded with the full context and the name of the, of the um, the attribute. That allows um, to have attributes having the same name in different contexts. And finally, this is uh, triples and triples, one another uh, representation of RDF. You basically have uh, the subject, what it is, 
So here, a country subdivision code and the value. Here, Brussels in Belgium. That's also a notation of RDF. JWS, um, if you are familiar with GWT, or JWT token, or JWT token, that's part of the, the specification. It allows uh, to ensure data consistency. Basically, you have an issuer uh, which the ID is publicly available, allowing, allowing you to retrieve its public key. Um, you resolve uh, this DID, get the public key, verify the signature, and that's it. You know that the data, the data was not tempered, and that's it. The only specific point, at least in Tigus release, is that we have two uh, marshalling methods to sign uh, the, um, the payloads. Um, the spec were not that clear at the moment. So we prepare the credential, canonicalize it uh, using URDNA 2015, hash it, we come back sign, and we open the proof to the credential. That's the first, the Gaia X signature method. And uh, since two weeks now, you, we have the proper uh, method of sing, signing uh, credentials. So we prepare the credential, we can unicalize it, we can unicalize the proof fields, except the uh, GWS value, obviously. We concatenate the item and we compact sign, and then we have the signed credential. Um, the um, signature verification methods were updated both in Tagus and in the upcoming Loire release to uh, handle both signatures methods, which means that if you are using a library that is properly implementing GWS, it should be working. If not, come back to us. And if you don't have a library already, uh, the GAIA-X Association provides one, um, an NPM library at the moment, uh, but we do know that there is some uh, needs in Python or in uh, Java. So if you have this kind of needs, uh, please tell us. Uh, we would love to do it. As you can see, that's already quite downloaded, so feel free to try it. Uh, that's an easy method to get credentials, signed at least. The ideas. Uh, you will hear about this, uh, about this a lot. Um, we are in a, well, willing to be decentralized world and decentralized identifiers are a part of it. Um, a decentralized identifier is basically a self-declared and self-hosted identity. I am my company, I host myself on my server, on my domain name, and publicly says, okay, here's my cryptographic material, here's my public key, feel free to use it to verify what I sign. At the moment, we only support one DID specification, which is DID web. Um, but maybe at some point there will be some other uh, in, um, specification implemented. Uh, feel free to, well, to implement it yourself and make a, make a pull request if you want, or to tell us that you are requiring something. Um, basically, the IDs uh, are just resolved to uh, the ID file, meaning that my DID compliance.lab.gaix-eu um, column v1 resolves to HTTPS, which is quite important here. There's no HTTP on the IDs. Uh, Compliance.lab.gaix-eu slash v1 slash did.json. If I do not have this pass in the, the DID that resolves to the dot well known uh, endpoint on the server, and that's quite important because that's already used, uh, for example, when you have um, an OAuth server, an open ID server, that's uh, endpoints that are already used. And this is, for example, my own DID. So as you can see, I have my company name. You can, say, you can see that I'm an issuer, uh, did web, backup.io. I have a verification method that will allow people to verify that credentials that, that are signed using this verification method can be, uh, can, uh, are valid. As you can see, my public key is there. I just removed it for the sake of readability, but uh, feel free to resolve it and see that my public key is there. Uh, we also uh, provide a library to generate your DID. Um, you just put uh, your public key, your domain name, and that's it, you have your DID ready to be hosted. Yep. Uh, last but not least, uh, Shackle. So Shackle, um, these are known as uh, shapes in our ecosystem. Uh, if you 
ever heard about us saying, okay, the shape is not good or you're not matching the shape. We are talking about this. Uh, shape stands for uh, shape constraints language. So basically, if you know XSD for XML, that's the same thing, but for RDF. So we just validate the structure of, of RDF documents, meaning that, uh, for example, the country code should be a string. Okay, it will match, uh, if the, it will try to match uh, the string, and if not, we'll return uh, an error, and we can just evict your credential. Um, we can't implement everything in Shackle. Uh, some specific rules can't be expressed in Shackle. So we have some business rules that are uh, implemented in the code on the compliance engine. I think I do have an example of shape. So for example here, I'm describing what is a participant, a legal participant. So as you can see, a legal participant has a legal registration number. It can have parent and sub organization. It should, it should have a headquarter address and a legal address. And the shapes of uh, those fields are described under. So basically, I'm just describing what I'm expecting from people. No. Now on the GAIEC specifications. Um, we have quite a lot of documents at the moment. We have the Identity and Credential Access Management, Management document, ICAM, the Policy Rules and Labeling document, the PRLD, the Architecture document, the Data Exchange document, and for Tagus, we had a document uh, that is named the Trust Framework that we, you will hear a lot that was merged in the PRLD and uh, Architecture document since. All documents are publicly available on gaix.eu. Even the, even the um, uh, uh, draft version of the documents are available, meaning that you can, if you are a member of GAIX, influence the specification. If you see something that is not correct or you think that should be done differently. Uh, I think I have an image, for example, the, the um, Trust Framework 2210 which is uh, the, um, based on, on what Tagus is implemented, shows what I showed you. A legal, a legal person, legal participant has a registration number, a headquarter address, a legal address, and parent and sub-organization. And we have the cardinalities saying, okay, that's not mandatory, those are mandatories. Um, I know that uh, reading specification, uh, specifications is not something that everybody likes. So in one slide, here's the specifications for at least Tagus. So the first one that I did not wrote is be nice. Just be nice, don't, uh, don't fraud, don't do something mean to the, to the ecosystem. Um, everything is, is described using verifiable credentials in JSON-LD. Each issuer has to provide signed terms and conditions. That's the be nice part. You are engaging yourself in uh, 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 complying with uh, the rules of the association. Uh, each participant has to provide a legal registration number issued by an accredited uh, notary, meaning that um, you have uh, to have, for example, a VAT ID, a U VAT ID, or be in the GLIFE repository of uh, companies. Um, and I think that we also have the ERI, um, I think that's the customs uh, mechanism of the EU. And that's the three notaries accredited at the moment. Uh, but feel free if you, for example, have a nice uh, open corporate API token that you want to share, you are free to, uh, to make a pull request and, uh, and update the notary. Um, one very specific part is that um, I showed you that we are using public keys and private keys and um, certificates. On production, uh, everything needs to be signed using an EVSSL or an ADAS certificate and keeper. That's a requirement. On development, you can use your uh, Let's Encrypt certificate, no problem. But on production, you will need to use a certificate that is illegally binding you to your credentials. Meaning that if you are uh, doing, part, for example, um, issuing credential in the name of Airbus and you are not a member of Airbus, they will have the power to sue you because you signed using a, uh, a proper certificate and you are bound to your, to your, uh, your um, credential. So take care. Um, also, the association is not hosting uh, the services that I will uh, demonstrate after. Uh, we do have instances for test and development purpose. 
but we have providers that are accredited uh, to issue compliance credentials and run the, um, the services. Those are the uh, GAIAX Digital Clearinghouse, or GAIAX-DCH. Um, they are publicly displayed on the website. You can choose uh, whomever you want. Uh, you are free to use one for uh, the notary and another one for the compliance. I will show that it works. Um, and we have more to come. At the moment, we have T-Systems, uh, Aruba IT, uh, and um, IRA Network from Spain. But I'm expecting to see OVH, Orange, uh, and a lot more after. And finally, one of the big parts is that when you have all your credentials um, and that the engine, after running in it, uh, says that everything is compliant, you will get a new verifiable credential, a JX compliance credential, saying, OK, the credential you submitted, they are valid, and uh, you can show it to the world. So um, in terms of implementation, per se, we do have our first production release. Uh, this is Tagus. This is the V1. Um, we implemented the Trust Framework 2210. We implemented partially the um, uh, policy rule and leveling document 2211, uh, which means you have participants, service offerings, uh, resources, uh, legal registration numbers, and other stuff. Uh, feel free to take a look at the documents. We also have uh, the service offering labels level one. And we do provide a bit of tooling uh, to well, gather around and uh, try to issue a credential. We do have the wizard that I will demonstrate after, and the libraries I mentioned, uh, the DID library, the signature library, and also a library that allows you to uh, verify that a DID issuer can be trusted. Um, the list of running endpoints is public on the website. I put the link in the presentation. Uh, you will see that uh, everyone is running uh, three services at the moment, the registry, the compliance, and the notary. Um, should be in the same version. Uh, if not, that's just minor fixes, so should don't, shouldn't be a problem. Um, I need to admit that there is some uh, lags in the implementation at the moment. Um, I mentioned the JSON-LG uh, namespace that is at the moment quite complicated. Um, we were quite new last year when we implemented everything. So we chose uh, a namespace uh, pointing on uh, development registry and stuff like that. Um, in Loire, uh, the namespace will be quite easier. Um, W3ID.org slash GaiaX, a version number, and that's it. Um, the shapes are not perfectly aligned with the specs. Um, we took some shortcuts for Tagus. Uh, we had to move forward. So, uh, for example, a legal participant uh, in Tagus uh, and should be legal person if you look at the trust framework. Um, we also have some uh, differences in the terms and conditions where we just put um, the whole terms and conditions in a one line in our credentials where it should be a hash, a URL, and stuff like that in the specifications. And also, uh, we have uh, something that is quite boring at the moment, but we chose to not do it in Tagus, uh, although we know how to fix it. Um, the types needs to be in the credential subject for the, um, the VC to be valid, uh, meaning that um, normally in the specification, you have your credential subject, you put credential subject and the tip of your subject, and that's it, should be valid. That's not the case uh, in the Tagus implementation. So you need to put the type in the credential subject. That's a bit boring, but we chose to uh, not uh, do a, such a huge change on a, on a version that's supposed to be in maintenance. Software architecture. Uh, this is quite new. Um, I decided to describe the architecture using the C4 model. So as you can see, uh, you have the participant, the company, willing to share uh, services or discover and use other companies' services and you will find everything that is in the ecosystem. So I mentioned the wizard that is just a, a, GUI, a GUI to allow you to visualize and issue credentials. You will have the notary that will, you, that will issue uh, legal registration numbers. We have the registry that is basically our source of truth for shapes, schemas, uh, trusted issuers, uh, revocation lists. All this kind of stuff in, is in the registry. We also have the compliance engine that basically performs the rule checks 
Uh, so that's, that means we perform the shackle validation, we perform the business validation, the signature validation, all in the compliance engine. And we have this uh, new member since last year. Um, the, um, we provided the community a way to share credentials uh, because we had a lot of people issuing credentials and nothing in between to synchronize catalogs or data spaces, for example. So that's not perfect, not at all. Uh, that's just a service that we run uh, backed by a DB, but at least we have something to move forward. And I hope to see the community raise at some point and say, okay, I have a better idea for the implementation. Maybe a DHT or something like that. But uh, yeah, feel free to, to come at us if you have ideas. And we also rely on external systems. Um, as I said, ADAS is one of the um, certificates you can use to issue credential. So we retrieve, uh, we retrieve the um, uh, certificate authority list from uh, the EU Commission ADAS Trusted Service Providers list. We also retrieve um, the Mozilla CA certificate list uh, that allows us to uh, identify EVSSL certificates. And the notary relies on three APIs the European Commission uh, VAT API, the EORI API, and the GLIFE API to identify companies using their EORI number, their uh, tax, EU tax ID, uh, VAT ID, sorry, and, and or uh, their GLIFE ID. Is there any question uh, from there? Quite intense. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, uh, from uh, one question. Uh, if uh, in the life cycle, uh, <clears throat> if you have a verified credential which is uh, uh, provable by a, 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 a key in, in, in a DID document, and the DID document is hosted at a um, uh, participant, and the participant leaves the GRX space. Uh, the verifiable credential is uh, still valid, but uh, I'm not able to uh, uh, check the proof uh, in a JSON web signature. Uh, uh, how is this solved? Is there any idea uh, for this? Or maybe uh, the, the just a uh, more easy uh, case, uh, there's a hacking attack uh, to, the, to the provider of the DID document, and the DID document is not uh, uh, available for some hours. And, uh, yes. um, in this case, uh, either you already know the issuer mm, by name, you can have it by telephone or something like that, and you can say, okay, I trust okay. you, or you just evict the credential for now. Um, in any case, uh, all credentials have an expiration date. Uh, the um, GAIX compliance credentials are valid for three months only. They will need to be renewed, which means that if at some point uh, your credentials are not valid, you, need, you will need to reissue them. Um, and yeah, if the, the DID cannot be retrieved, just evict the credential for now, unless you have another verification method, uh, you know, by mail or... Isn't it an uh, option to, to store the DID documents uh, uh, more centralized at a federated catalog? Uh, so uh, the federated catalog is uh, uh, driven by uh, the, the whole federation, and uh, 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 if the DID documents were uh, located uh, all in the uh, federated catalog yeah. uh, uh, would not disturb the, the uh, um, working of the, of the data space. But that means that you are centralizing a decentralized identity, which is no, uh, just contrary to the principle. Federated or de uh, centralized? The, the, the identity is decentralized, but you are free to cache it for a bit, for example. Yeah. You can have some cache on your data space or federation but you are supposed to re resolve them time to time because they are, the keeper can change, for example. Yes. Um, I mean, ah, okay. pretty much every issuer is issuing one year certificate, even if you purchase a three year certificate, which means that at some point the key, the key will need to be rotated, which means the DID will change. So yeah, you can have a cache, but I would not rely on a cache because you don't know if yeah. the keeper would have changed. And yeah, if the server is down on the, on the the DID issuer part, maybe the keys were compromised also, so maybe everything will need to be trashed. So yeah, uh, unless you are able to verify yourself using email or Slack or whatever, I will just not trust the, the credential. Okay. Thank you. Anything else? Hi. Hi.
DLD systems, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, it was, it's a big European project also, and that, that has all the trusted authority, certification, issue, DLD, different DLD methods, so a lot of stuff is already there, right? Yep. Uh, we don't reinvent the wheel when it already exists, yeah. Um, but um, in this case, um, we are not talking about the European blockchain at all. There's no blockchain at the moment in Gaia X. That's let's, let's remove the blockchain yeah. so it's an engine to, to give you, to reduce complexity because you have to put API power. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, if that's it, that's the moment for a small demo. Um, I uh, mentioned the wizard, so I will show you uh, the wizard, uh, basically. So wizard.lab.gaix.eu, and that's it. You can issue credentials uh, right now. And this wizard was uh, created so that you can uh, issue your first credential without having a certificate, a DID. Obviously, that means that it, it only works on development. Um, because you are creating a DID, you are creating a, um, a certificate and a keeper just for you, but you won't be able to use it on production. Uh, so this is the wizard, and we have uh, this uh, small stepper that will allow you to create credential in four steps. Um, so I will start, I will put my legal name, I will put uh, my company that ID, quite simple. I will put my headquarter uh, ISO 2166-2 uh, code, so north of France, in France. Next, that's it. If the network is good with me, that will work. Okay, perfect. Here's the terms and conditions I'm about to sign. Um, so I agree to the terms and conditions. And here's the credential that the, uh, the wizard created for me. And that's it. I sign. Uh, 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 okay. And here's my credentials. <coughs> that's it. I do have credentials that I can submit uh, to the compliance engine. Um, there's also some uh, less easier way to do it. Um, here you have all the examples of credentials you can create with the wizard. For example, a physical resource, <coughs> meaning that uh, the resource is maintained <coughs> by someone, uh, owned by someone, manufactured by someone. Um, it's, well, it's physical, so it's located somewhere, so you will need to put the address and uh, maybe the GPS location if you know it, and if it's not uh, a confidential uh, info. And yeah, you can you know, just issue physical resource credential. Um, we also have uh, this stepper that allows you to have like forms uh, to create your VCs, uh, for example, for a service offering. And I think we have autocomplete on it, meaning that if you don't know what is your, uh, pro your uh, uh, VC ID for your participant, the wizard will be able to find it in your uh, holder and put it, which is quite nice. Obviously, that's one way to do it, um, but there is a harder way uh, to do it. Uh, here we are. Maybe, or not. And that's an old GIF, I know. Um, but we do have other ways to, to create credentials. Um, I showed you the wizard, and here's some code. Yay! So I created a small uh, Jupyter notebook in Python, and I will show you how I do. Um, basically, I have a NAND file where I put, it, I put my issuer DID, the verification method, which is basically my DID plus my keeper name in my DID, uh, my certificate, and my private key. That's it. I won't show it to you because that's a proper EVSSL certificate, and I want to keep my keeper secret, but, well, at least my private key secret. And here it is. So I have a bit of uh, setup in there. Um, for example, I prepared um, an OID to ALG uh, map, allowing me to identify what is um, the algorithm used to create the keeper based on the OID of the certificate. That's something that is uh, well quite annoying, but if you don't know what is your uh, algorithm, this will resolve it for you. I'm also loading well my .on file. I'm loading templates and my environment, and that's it. 
and I can generate a DID. Uh, yes, I can. Better? Okay. Um, so as I said, I will generate my DID. Uh, this relies on loading my certificate, <coughs> loading my public key from my certificate. That's something you can do if you don't have your public key on hand. Uh, you can deduce it using your, uh, certificate, your certificate. I will expose my public key as a GWK, so a JSON web key. Um, and I will just use uh, my small template, uh, DID template, put everything in it, and here's my DID. Uh, the template, that's just something basic. That's a JSON LD. I have uh, the two contexts I will use. Um, the ID is my issuer. The verification is my issuer uh, with my uh, key name. And I will have my public key uh, put, it, uh, put in there. And that's it. So if everything works, Yep, perfect. Uh, yep, that's the proper time. And here's my DID. I will just need to host it on my server. So on backup.io slash dot well none slash DID.json. And that's it. I have my DID. My public key is described there. And people will be able to use it to verify my credentials. Next step is uh, creating and signing the terms and conditions. So terms and conditions. Pretty basic, the context, that's a verifiable credential. It will be issued when I will perform the, the Python script. That's a GAIX terms and condition. Uh, that's the content of the terms and condition. I will put uh, an ID to this because I will need to refer to it. My issuer uh, name and the credential ID. And that's it. So that means that uh, Running and I have my terms and conditions signed. So the context, the subject, and the most important part, the signature. So that's a JSON web, uh, web signature 2020. The assertion, met the verification method is my key, and we have the GWS, which is a compact GWS. We don't want to put all the payloads in the, in the signature to keep it short. I will be able now to request a legal registration number from the notary, which is the next step. I uh, prepared uh, my VAT ID. I prepared a request for the notary. So I will just put my, my VAT ID, um, the subject ID I will require, and perform just a call, a small uh, post call to the, to the notary. It runs and executed. So Here's my legal registration number. The ID is the one I require uh, that will point on the credential on my server. Um, the issuer is not myself, but the notary itself that issued the credential. The subject, that's, well, my VAT ID. And this is the information that the API gave to us about my country. And we do have the evidence that uh, an API call was performed because we have the URL and the execution date of this call to the VAT API. And the proof, again, signed by the notary itself and not by myself. I'm not a nullod notary. But uh, this is just verifying that the VAT ID is right. It yep. doesn't give you uh, to which company or no. the company name. So no. you could attach it to you could. whatever company you want. You could, but as you are signing your credential using an EVSSL, which yeah. is legally binding you, yeah. meaning that if you are using someone else's company VAT ID, to, perform, to issue your credential, they will be able to sue you. Okay, but I could use my own VAT ID to create you different can. participants to play around. Yeah, and you can, but build up an ecosystem. Um, at some point, uh, the catalogs, um, that's something that is in the trust framework 2210, I think, the catalog should implement uh, indexes, indices, uh, the trust, the veracity, and the transparency. Mm -hmm. And if all your participants are issued by you, that means that your uh, veracity is very low because uh, we can see that you are not Airbus or you are not uh, BMW. Um, so people will be able to say, OK, I don't trust this credential, but I will take the one from Airbus or BMW. Mm -hmm. So that's how we manage it via transparency. But if you work with sub-organizations, for example, yep. or, or different sort of groups in your company, not, not each group has its own data ID. 
I don't know uh, because in France it it would be the case. Yeah, each sub company has its, its own uh, siren okay, or siren number. So no, each department. No. You have yeah. Departments, so, and you want to identify the departments mm. as a participant. Well, you can using the same VAT ID, but yeah. Uh, okay. yeah, sure, go ahead. Yeah. But still, there's no bound between there's no bound between um, your certificate, legal registration number uh, used, and the fact that you are issuing a legal uh, legal registration number in GAIX. But yeah, you will uh, associate this legal registration number with another VC. This one will be signed using your EVSSL certificate, and then we can see the link and verify that there's something that matches or not. Um, so this is for the legal registration number. I will now uh, issue a participant credential, my participant. Uh, you can see that I'm always using the same nomenclature uh, for my IDs. I put in the ID um, the URL I will use to retrieve the credential, and for the subject, just um, hashtag CS. That's just my convention. You are free to use the one you want. Um, so my participant, I already filled uh, the legal name, the headquarter address, and the legal address. And I will just need to put my legal registration number, credential subject ID. And that's the reason uh, I need the legal, regi registra legal registration number before issuing my participant. <coughs> that's because the two are linked, and I need uh, the legal registration number to issue the participant. And that's the link between the two credentials. Um, let's go, let's sign it. That's not very visual, sorry, uh, less than the wizard. There's not this magical effect. But you can see that I have a legal, a legal participant with my company name, with the credential subject ID from my legal registration number, which is uh, there. And it's signed using my keeper, so I'm the issuer there. And last but not least, um, I will need to, to wrap everything and submit it to the compliance engine. Um, for this example, I chose the Aruba uh, compliance engine. Um, as you can see, when I issued my legal registration number, I used um, the GAIX lab notary. And um, yeah, I will show that there is complete uh, interoperability between clearing houses. So the verifiable presentation is quite simple. That's a verifiable presentation. I put all my VCs, and that's it. That's a VP. And here's the result. Um, here's the verifiable presentation. So basically, verify present, verifiable presentation, an array, and all my VCs signed. And the response of the compliance engine is a new credential. That is a type JX compliance, and we will have all the IDs from my VCs, an integrity check, what was the normalization used to um, calculate the checksum, uh, what GAIX, uh, what GAIX uh, transform work version I'm using, and what was the original credential type. So here's, it was my legal registration number, my terms and conditions, and my participant. And if I click on it, perfect. And that's it. Normal world, uh, in the business world, you will probably rely on something like that more than on the wizard because uh, you will automate, do cron tasks, and stuff like that. How many lines? How many lines in your file uh, So 18 plus 10 plus 17 plus, plus 8 plus the DID, 9. And there's prints. There's prints, there's stuff that I 
uh, I, I could have done it like quite shorter. That's quite short, yeah. And it's GAIX ready. And it's already available on GitLab, obviously. Yeah, so, it okay. yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I will. Uh, and you will be able to review the, um, this presentation. Um, we captured it, we recorded it. So, you will be able to see it uh, in the comfort of your sofa uh, if it was like too quick today. It is on the GitLab of GAIX. Yeah. Um, and that's it. I do have my compliance. And what else? Okay, um, good. I, I'm compliant with GAIX, at least in the 2210 version. What else? Well, I will need to inform the world that I'm GAIX compliant. And uh, that's the moment the CES uh, comes to play. And the CES, that's the credential events service, the service we provide to the community to share their credential. Um, the service is open, free, free of charge. Uh, you just want uh, the source, that's the MarketX demo. And I will just put my data, so my compliance VC, and that's it. That, that will be available on the, on the CES. And let's go. <laughs>